Hey there, it's Anonymous T, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today I am talking Usher. I am giving a thorough review that you are not going to get anywhere else on my takes of the halftime performance the good the bad and the ugly uh we are going to get into all of it first we will talk about the highlights before we get into the low lights you guys uh and first disclaimer full disclosure uh, if you do not know i am actually a huge day one usher fan since uh call me a mac days i i've seen usher plenty of times in concert i was a childhood fan i i saw him you know when he opened up for janet jackson on the velvet rope tour when the my way album was out and i was like a preteen. like i i we go back we go way back as far as the level of expectations and everything else as it comes to you know being a fan of usher seeing him live in concert many times and all of the things so so this is going to come from a perspective of where we're going to outline the good right and so the good of course uh for the most part the set list was all right uh, seven songs off of Confessions were performed. Uh, two songs were performed off of the My, My Way album, and two songs were performed off the 8701 album. And um, and then there were like a couple other uh, tracks that were performed on two other albums. Uh, let's get into uh, the best parts for me was the roller skating was one. Love the roller skating sequence at the Super Bowl. I thought it was genius. I thought it was really cool and iconic. I also love the part where uh, Usher also skated under Will I Am uh, as well uh, during the OMG performance as well. I I loved the segment, the breakdown of all of Usher's ballads. I wish there was a little bit more time spent on it. Um, you know, when he went into, uh, you know, nice and slow uh burn you got it bad and then doing the iconic moves from the you got it bad video i loved also the guitar solos from her also a nice surprise i i felt like that and her playing guitar on bad girl was awesome uh was cool as ever i also i feel i also loved of course the last performance yeah uh, of course, with Little John and, and Ludacris. And so there were some unique things that took place, right? There were some unique things that happened. So during the performance of Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys caught this, but when Ludacris started performing, he was rapping on the beat to Freak a Leak, you guys. <laughs> on the beat to Freak a Leak uh, by P.D. Pablo. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> but but I was lit. It, it was lit. And then uh, towards the end of the Yeah performance, it, uh, what was mixed in was Little John's Get Low. I thought that was genius, right? Then also, uh, a couple of other things uh, you guys didn't, if you didn't notice, uh, Usher brought out some Kappas, you guys, uh, to do some shimmying and, and all of the things. Uh, so shout out to Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I know they're going crazy. Not sure whether or not Usher is an honorary member or not of the frat, but, um, but that was slick. Also, shout out to Jackson State University Sonic Boom. They were the HBCU band, uh, the best band in the land to uh, perform at the Super Bowl uh, for Usher. I thought it was genius. Um, they killed it on uh, Love in This Club and when they played uh, Caught Up. And then, of course, at the end with Yeah, and they spelled out Usher. Thought that was so awesome. Uh, really enjoyed that as well. Love that Usher performed You Don't Have to Call. Haven't heard that song performed in ages, so I was very happy uh, to see that incorporated into the Super Bowl. I also uh, love the 7 o'clock on the dot challenge, Where is Usher Incorporated. Uh, now, I will say I would have loved for Usher to do the rap. They call me U-S-H-E-R-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. Now tell me what you want to do with me. I'm feeling like Joe to see every time that you roll with me, hold me, try to keep control of me nice and slowly. Now, that's my that's my cut. I love nice and slow. Off the My Way album. Uh, loved also Superstar. Uh, you know, I love that. Love the falsetto at the beginning. Uh, spotlights, big stage. Loved Usher shouting out his mom, saying, Mom, we made it. Uh, nobody thought I was ever going to be here. I was ever going to do this. Also love that, uh, you know, he was praising God. 
uh, because a lot of these artists uh, get to a certain level of fame and God is nowhere in their speeches, you guys. God is nowhere uh, to be found when, when they're reaching the pinnacle and the milestone like this, right? So, so these are all of the positive things. And I think also with a lot of the special guests, Usher wanted to, you know, show homage and pay homage to those that, you know, have worked with him over the years and helped contribute to some of his most iconic hits. So, so I understood, you know, Jermaine Dupri being there and part of one of the transitions in which they were celebrating, of course, the Confessions album. So it made sense they performed seven songs off the album. The album is 14 times platinum, the last Diamond album uh, by an R&B singer so 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 it's iconic it's a zero skips album and even the song my boo that usher performed with alicia keys that's on the deluxe edition of confessions that's not even on like the original one right i uh, so 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 no no issues there um no issues with will i am uh coming out because i think because i really didn't want to hear omg at all um however i understand why usher performed it i i understand because of the fact that in 2011 of course black eyed peas when they did the super bowl halftime show they brought out usher so i think usher was also giving back to will i am which was kind of like a humble moment and, and giving him a little bit of a you know platform and stage presence also love little john i'm um, getting to do one of his songs turned down for what to kind of get the crowd a little hype again thought that was pretty cool loved uh you know the touches of vegas i just felt um and as we get into some of the things that were not so cool in a little while um i just felt there was too much that was happening right um and even with some of the vegas effects i felt um you know a little bit could have been incorporated into the set whether it was outfits or different things but when there's like 10 things going on at once in the stage it's hard to like concentrate on like what is actually happening um a couple of other positive things that i wanted to discuss as well is uh the homage that usher was paying if you guys did not notice uh the blinged out glove of course the one glove was of course a tribute to michael jackson uh the guitar playing the guitar solo by her was an ode to prince because usher said many times uh how much he loved michael jackson and prince's super bowl halftime performance and wanted to celebrate the past present and future and wanted to do his own version of a tribute to them so that was that and then also when he took off his shirt for you got it bad I noticed he had on these high-waisted pants and immediately I thought oh this is a tribute um, you know to to Al Green and, and Al Green's uh, greatest hist al album cover uh, it was I what I immediately thought in my mind um, so 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 those were the positives those were the positives that that we're going to get out of the way right that was you know everything that, that I enjoyed about the performance but let's get into the bad and, and the number one bad is alicia keys uh, ever since you know this cheating scandal with swiss beats happened her voice has been gone ever since you guys her voice has been gone it has been screeching at octaves that i have never heard her sing before prior to this affair with swiss beats and, and and ever since god was like you know what no more voice no more voice for you uh, uh this is it this is it michael jackson <laughs> like, like 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 real talk uh because what was that that first note when she came out uh with the cape on at the piano of of you know if i ain't got you one of her most iconic songs and i was like what note is that and then uh usher came over to you know seeing the end of that and then they transitioned over to my boo and of course usher likes to have you know like a female interest he's like flirting with on stage so so none of that bothered me and those of you who've seen the video for my boo that didn't bother me the song went number one however i said in a previous video i didn't feel like my boo was like super bowl worthy but i understand it as far as like why usher wanted to do it but ultimately uh the voice was flat the voice was flat the voice was not where it needed to be right so so i felt alicia keys took a little bit of air and momentum out of the super bowl and out of the set list that that usher gave us and um and so that kind of left me a little bit disappointed i was not happy with that at all uh next were the sound issues you guys the sound issues were absolutely terrible i couldn't hear usher i was trying to blast my tv because i thought there was something wrong with my tv i was like what was going on with the sound what was going on with the acoustics it was really bad it was awful absolutely awful um so didn't like that i did not like i uh, ushers I, I i felt the set was a little overwhelming I felt, you know, sometimes when people say less is more, they mean it. 
and and I feel like in this capacity I understand you want to pay homage to Las Vegas with the Vegas showgirls with uh, the Cirque du Soleil uh, and then the people in the stripper bowls and, and all these things you, you want all of this activity but the problem is you get distracted when there's so much going on visually you don't know what you're paying attention to and then the dancers they were all in all various outfits in the very beginning so, so it was hard to see like what the vision what the direction was right it would have been better off if you know the dancers were, were all uniform and wore something that was all of like a similar outfit of some sort or at least a similar color like it was later on in the set for the other performances and costume changes uh, because I felt again it was like another distraction it was almost as if each dancer was dressed as like some tribute of like a Vegas show it's kind of what the dancers looked like to me in the beginning of the set and and so 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 that was too busy for me uh the vocals i i love that usher wanted to sing live i i know a lot of you guys you know drag people who lip sing and all these things and i know i understand that it's hard when you are dancing your heart out uh and trying to sing live vocals it is hard when you are sweating up a storm and you are out of breath and all of these things however i think with the excitement of the super bowl halftime performance i think there was a lot more time spent on the production of the Super Bowl halftime performance than there was the actual performance because the vocals told the story and lack thereof, right? Um, you know, Usher's a great singer, you know, when everything's on point, when everything is on. However, uh, a lot of times he was out of breath, like he couldn't even fully sing You Don't Have to Call, which is one of my favorite songs because he was out of breath already. He was already out of breath within the first couple of minutes of the actual halftime performance and I was like, uh-oh. I see where this is going to go. Uh, you know, I was like, get this man. We <laughs> like, did anybody, uh, you know, did he do any normal regimen? Did he do like the Mariah Carey regimen with like the humidifier and, and all these things? Because I, because I need to understand, especially Alicia, Alicia Keys too. Like, like what was happening <laughs> with the vocals? The vocals uh, were not where they needed to be. And this is somebody who has seen Usher live on tour several times. And I'm talking about touring all over the world on several dates and, and not sounding this bad right so so i think like i said uh because you're focused in on trying to make a super bowl memorable a halftime show performance memorable you're trying to incorporate all of these things for the culture but if the performance itself is not getting any attention then this is what's going to happen at the final product right uh but ultimately because so many of us are nostalgic about Usher and uh, you know all the hits that he gave us you know in the in the early 2000s and in the end of the 90s and so forth a lot of you are giving him a pass on, on the vocals and and we need to be honest that the vocals were not where I preferred them to be uh, coming from somebody who's an Usher fan uh, because I know what he's capable of and and this wasn't it uh, vocally right there were times of course where his vocals came together when he did like the interlude of course uh, to superstar and all those things right but then there was just other times like I said where he was just flat out of breath and could barely even perform his own songs um, glad he left the Diddy shout out out of the performance um, happy about that oh a couple other things I'm happy about too I'm happy there was no Justin Bieber to be found uh, despite all of the rumors despite TMZ and everybody else trying to make fetch happen and make Justin Bieber be on this uh, you know on this bill and then the rumors that uh, Usher was going to do a dance battle with Chris Brown and they're not even on speaking terms like like, like let's keep it a book <laughs> For, for, for what uh, we're going to actually, you know, say is true and isn't true. Um, I was concerned when it leaked that Alicia Keys was going to be performing, but I was happy, of course, that a lot of the other special guests were not um, leaked, even though I kind of felt by the interviews and by the promo for the Super Bowl halftime show performance that we were likely going to see Little John and Usher. It just didn't make sense for one of the biggest songs off of the Confessions album for them not to be there and, 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 and you know, be a part of that moment. Um, also, one thing I didn't like about the set list, uh, My Way, you know, this is a celebration of the My Way and the anniversary album, and for you to just say a couple lyrics off of it at the beginning and then spend more time when caught up, I, I was floored. I was absolutely floored. I was like, Usher, Usher, I would have preferred you to sing more of My Way than Caught Up. Like, I like Caught Up. Do I like Caught Up more than My Way? Absolutely not absolutely not and it would have been nice to, to hear a little bit more um of my way um also i feel as though there were some transitions that were a little bit rushed um and, and some of the mixes that i didn't like um but 
you know, overall, I, I think that was just kind of the biggest takeaways for me as far as like the, the negative were, were the vocals, uh, you know, just already being out of breath a couple minutes in to where, you know, you have so much activity, you're trying to be all over the stage, you're trying to, and that was the other thing I didn't like, he was dancing way too much on the turf, and, and it's cool that you want to kind of be down on the actual field and, and doing performance, no problem with that, the problem was you were just there too long, right? And so, um, due to, you know, the condition of some of these football turfs, that can also impact, you know, how tired you are and all these things because of, you know, not being is it like a smooth stage that you're just kind of gliding away on, right? It's a little bit different when you're talking about football turf that uh, the NFL players had just played, you know, a 30-minute, you know, first half on, right? So, so, so those were things that, you know, I felt really could have been tidied up. Also, another thing I felt is we really could have gave more focus in on, on the Sonic Boom, on the uh, Jackson State University band. Uh, if you wanted to incorporate the band, I understood what Usher was doing to try to highlight them for certain songs. But I think what happened was it got lost when, when you're seeing, like I said, all of the Vegas stuff, the Vegas showgirls, the Vegas Cirque du Soleil people, the, the girls on the stripper poles. Like, like when you see all of this other activity, it takes away from the band because you really don't hear the band or see the band really for the standouts um, when he did Caught Up and when he did Love in This Club and then when he did Yeah. Other than that, I forgot all about the band, right? Uh, so, so, so those were just kind of my critiques, um, and, and I know I'm going to get some pushback on this. Uh, I don't feel, and this is somebody who's a diehard Usher fan, I don't feel this was better than Rihanna's Super Bowl performance, and I don't feel this was better than Dr. Dre's Super Bowl performance. I said it. I said it. At me. I said it, you guys. Because other people are not going to. Right? Uh, it was not better, though, than J-Lo and Shakira, and it was not better, of course, than The Weeknd. But it was definitely uh, not better than Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime. See, what I liked about Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show was that it's the perfect example of less is more. All the dan dancers were in uniform. Uh, there was appropriate cuts and mixes of the music. I felt whoever engineered the music did phenomenal and should have been the person to do the music, uh, you know, score for Usher. Uh, I know Jesse Collins produced the show, but I felt they should have worked with Adam Blackstone again, um, who worked uh, last year with Rihanna. Uh, I felt the the music itself was seamless and uh, how they just went into all of the hits and you got just enough of each of the hits and, and a little bit mixing in of some other stuff, right? But it wasn't like, it didn't feel like it was rushed. And, and that was my problem, I think, with Usher, was I felt everything was rushed. I felt there was a rush to get to so many different places on the stage, on the turf, to do your costume changes, to do all of these different things, that by the time you're running all around like a crazy person, you don't have, a, have the time to really enjoy your performance. You don't have the time to, to give us the vocals that we needed to hear. Uh, it, it, so that was my frustration. So it was like, yeah, people wanted to get on Rihanna for being pregnant and stuff, but it actually um, turned out to be a blessing because uh, then there's less time of all of this other extra that's taking place. Uh, you really had the dancers working their butt off and, and you really had time to focus on the music and focus on the songs. And I feel like while we were celebrating Usher songs, I felt like there was so much rush, you guys. Because here was ultimately all the songs, if you guys are not aware. Uh, so because it's not what it's because they're not reporting it correctly on any article you guys reference um, so here's the set list coming from the actual fan of Usher uh, so he opened up with my way did a couple of lines for my way but ultimately I uh, didn't sing it uh, and performed caught up perform you don't have to call performed uh, the superstar um, song uh, just like the beginning interlude and things uh, perform the original love in this club uh, performed uh, Alicia Keys that's when she came out and completely just you know the vocals were just not <laughs> completely there's like a, uh, a uh, I think a like a white Alicia challenge or, or not Alicia challenge that's on Twitter right now where people are posting uh, her screeching vocals and other people with screeching vocals like it's a hot mess uh, but nonetheless uh, she came in with if I ain't got you and uh, Usher came in and kind of sang like a little duet at the end they then transitioned into their song together off the Confessions Extended Edition album, My Boo. 
then Dur Jermaine Dupree came out. Um, that was another thing. I didn't understand why he had on, like, those little girls. Like, remember when you're, like, a little girl and you have, like, those little sacks, those dress sacks with, like, the flat the feathers on it or, like, the ruffles? I had no idea what he had on. And, and, and like, capris. I, I, I had no idea what was happening. I don't know if he was trying to be, like, a maestro or something or I don't know. It was just all bad. Um, but nonetheless, uh, he's giving a shout out, you know, because obviously it's the anniversary of Confessions and, and all these things. And so then we transition into uh, Confessions, the part two version. Uh, we then, like I said, the one of my favorite parts, of course, is the transition into the slow song. So we got into Nice and Slow. Uh, we got into Burn and we got into You Got It Bad. And then, of course, like I said, her playing the uh, iconic guitar solo that's in You Got It Bad, Usher ripping his shirt off for You Got It Bad and doing, um, you you know the iconic move that he does in the music video for you got it bad also uh you know she played guitar as well for bad girl however technically usher didn't perform it because he was still getting changed and to put on his roller skates and, and, and change his outfit and all the things uh and so then he came out with well i am of course uh as they were doing the roller skating for omg uh, and uh, then from there, uh, Usher changed out of his roller skates to to put on uh, tennis shoes to uh, dance for the finale number of Yeah, uh, which predict um, which prior to like I said earlier in the video was Little John's turn down for what, um, and, and then transitioned into the Yeah uh, with of course uh, mixing in Freak a Leak and 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 get low at the Super Bowl, you guys. <laughs> Uh, but I was here for it. I was here for it. Those of you who remember the early 2000s and the club days and how much and how influential uh, music from Atlanta was and just the crunk era in itself, uh, I, I, I wasn't mad at it at all. I, I wanted more of it, to be honest with you. Uh, so, so, so there was that. There, there is my review of Usher. Uh, the good and the bad and the ugly and what the heck right uh so so there is that so let me know your guys's thoughts in the comments and again this is coming from a diehard usher fan like i said i don't subscribe to stan mentality if i am a huge fan of you if i'm a day one a one day one fan of you i'm going to give it to you raw i'm going to tell you the positive that you did but i'm also going to drag uh the problems that took place as well because it's important to point them out otherwise uh you're not being honest with yourself right so there is that let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.